John has been working with rare books and manuscripts in Oregon for over 35 years and has been called on to appraise and evaluate a number of key historical collections in the state, including the Library of Mark Hatfield, Library and Papers of Mark Hatfield, and the papers of author Ken Kesey. Um, we are pleased to have him here tonight to talk a little bit about the collection from that perspective of someone who has worked so much with what's out there documenting Oregon and, and how he sees this in that context. John? Um, well, first of all, I want to thank you, Charlotte. I'm deeply honored to be part of this. I, I really am. And I want to thank your family and you for everything for changing the world. Um, and I'm, I want to thank you for collect, donating this wonderful library, a collection of yours, to my alma mater. Uh, I, I kind of spent most of my undergraduacy right on this floor, so I, I'm, I'm home. Um, and also for hiring me to appraise your archive. <laughs> Again, it's a great honor. Mahatma Gandhi said that a small body of determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can alter the course of history. And he's tr it's right, it's true. The Rutherford family, by their unceasing efforts while they lived, changed the world, and their efforts continue beyond the grave by this archive. I could talk a long time about the importance of archive, but I'm going to try to keep it short. To start with, imagine what it would be like if we had one appointment book for Lincoln or Jesus or Buddha. Wouldn't our history change? Just one appointment book. Uh, of course, uh, you, know, that you could get in some funny jokes about that. Too. <laughs> Think of the things we could learn. And then stop and imagine how poor we would be without a, a little tiny archive. It was a diary by a teenage girl, and her name was Anne Frank. How that changed our hearts. The things in archives like photographs, Letters, diaries, checkbooks, ledgers don't interpret history. They don't put a spin on history. They are the stuff of history. For those of you who would write biographies, this archive is a smorgasbord of documents, photographs, appointment books, checkbooks, pamphlets, newspapers, photographs, and all kinds of ephemera that will let you look into the very hearts of this important family. For those of you who would like to write general histories, social histories, cultural histories, Portland histories, Oregon histories, national histories, you have been given a pantry teeming with groceries to prepare a thousand factual feasts. And for you students wanting to write papers and theses, this archive presents you with an endless menu of possibilities. I foresee at least two dozen books coming out of this books by historians, biographers, sociologists, anthropologists, political scientists, and maybe even a novel and play. Personal and professional archives usually focus on the career of one person. Most of the archives I see come in a shoebox. They're just letters, you know, say passed down from a family. They could be letters home from a soldier on the front, or maybe tender, loving letters. Uh, then there's the archives usually kept by some professional feller who's got 10 boxes of everything he did in his career or her career. Such archives are wonderful snapshots into history. If these are snapshots into history, this archive is a full-length feature film in color produced by Cecil B. DeMille and a cast of thousands. This is a very important archive. I have appraised the personal letters of Mark Hatfield. I have appraised the professional archive of Ken Kesey. I have appraised some, all the president, lots of letters from Presidents Washington up to George W. I'm waiting for Barack's letters next. <laughs> I've, I've handled lots of things. This is the most significant, historically significant 
collection I have ever appraised. The Rutherford Family Archive is about an entire family and an entire community. In this regard, the Rutherford Family is an exceptional and that's why it's significant. The historical value is derived from the fact that it is source material, it is derived from the fact that it is complete. And I mean every scrap of paper, I know I've gone through it. Every photograph, every notepad has a direct relationship to another paper, another photograph, another scrap of paper. It all comes together. You get the whole picture. The archive is more complete, more comprehensive, more interrelated to family, to community, to city, to nation than any other archive I have ever handled, ever. And bearing that in mind, I want to encourage all of you to start saving your archives. Yeah, do your emails, but send real letters <laughs> with real stamps. And I want you to do like the Rutherford family, and when you take a photograph, take two minutes and identify on the back or on the side who is in that picture. Because to future generations, this is gold mine of information. It puts people in a community. Who was with you when? Whether we like it or not, we're all part of history. And that's why we must preserve our heritage with archives. I encourage your, your children and their children to keep adding to this archive. Save, ev yeah, save everything. <laughs> um, I want to close by thanking my alma mater, Portland State University, for taking this gift. And I want to especially thank you, Chris, where, wherever you went. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's, it, it is a commitment to preserve an archive. It, 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 there's money, there's effort, there's taking care of the items, and um, archives can be lost if they're not protected. I, I, I can tell you lots of archives I've seen go up in smoke, go into trash cans, get just, you know, mice make a home in it, you know, it, it's a mess. But it's not just the preservation that's important, it's the accessibility. If, an, if you don't have accessibility to an archive, its usefulness is diminished. If it's just locked up, why have it? Um, the city of Portland does not truly yet understand the significance of this gift. They will in the fullness of time. Uh, as Dr. Milner has pointed out, we, we, we are temporary. Our memories fail us, and our society continually wants to reinterpret history. We, we're always reinterpreting things. But the documents, the documents remember, the page remembers, the print, printed word, the scrap of paper, the photograph, it remembers what we cannot. It lasts longer than we do. And for those people who generate archives, your family, and Chris, for those of you who take care of this, I, I applaud you because you're nothing less than the noblest stewards to the truth. Thank you. <laughs>